This is Twit. China is opening a free trade zone next week in Shanghai. And according to the South China Post, internet service within the zone will be free of the usual Chinese blocks. Sites like Twitter, Facebook, the New York Times will all be freely accessible, unlike in the rest of China. Microsoft will take advantage of the zone to partner with Best TV New Media on a joint venture to produce video games for the Chinese market. China banned game consoles in 2000 in order to protect youths from their corrupting influence. Hmm, didn't know that. Yesterday, insurance and investment company Fairfax Financial Holdings offered $4.7 billion to take BlackBerry private. Fairfax already owned 10% of BlackBerry. The BlackBerry board did sign a letter of intent to accept Fairfax's offer, but a deal is far from done. Now, the letter lets BlackBerry shop itself around for six weeks as Fairfax inspects BlackBerry's books. If the deal falls through, BlackBerry will owe Fairfax a sum ranging from $157 million to $262 million, depending on the stage of the deal. Those of you disappointed that Apple didn't announce new iMacs last week can stop being disappointed. Apple just released new iMacs, albeit with some minor updates. The new specs feature 2.7 gigahertz Core i5 processors, Intel's Iris Pro GPU. Other options can get you up to 3.4 gigahertz Core i5 Haswell chip and NVIDIA GeForce 700 GPU. 8 gigabytes of RAM and 1 terabyte drives are now standard, and you can max that out to 3 terabyte fusion drives and 32 gigabytes of RAM. The new lines are available today, and base configurations range from $1,299 to $1,999. The latest version of Google's Android Device Manager lets users remotely lock their device. The feature requires your Android device to be attached to some kind of network, but assuming that's true, you'd be able to go to Android Device Manager on the web and remotely lock down your device. Google's trying to get rid of the legacy Netscape plugin architecture from Chrome. Starting in January 2014, all but a short white list of commonly used plugins like Silverlight, Facebook Video, Google Earth will be blocked from the Netscape plugin. So those won't be blocked, but everything else will. Uh, users can whitelist their own plugins, but Google expects to end Netscape plugin support entirely by the end of 2014. Google also will stop accepting applications in the Chrome Web Store that support the Netscape plugin API starting today. They'll be delisting them in May and they'll unpublish them entirely in September. Sarah, you're a cord cutter and not here, Aww. but you'd be interested in this next story. Apple just re-released Apple TV version 6.0 software, which brings iTunes Radio and a number of new features. Apple originally released 6.0 on Friday, but the update kind of bricked other devices or bricked the Apple TVs. So The Verge says right now, so far, the update seems to be bug-free. Keep your fingers crossed. BlackBerry Messenger for iOS and Android is going to take a little longer to arrive. BlackBerry Messenger Executive VP Andrew Brocking wrote in a post Monday night that the leak of an unreleased BBM for Android app has a glitch that causes a traffic spike, and BlackBerry will hold off releasing the new apps until it can completely block the leaked version and reinforce its system to handle any future traffic spikes. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration released guidelines on how it will regulate health-related smartphone apps and accessories. The FDA will oversee apps that are intended to be used as an accessory to a regulated medical device and apps that transform a mobile platform into a regulated medical device. The FDA assures the public that the agency will not regulate the sale or use of tablets or smartphones, nor will it regulate app stores. The Street reports Twitter has decided to list its stock on the New York Stock Exchange, rather than the more common home for tech stocks, the NASDAQ, the street sources say Twitter will sell between 50 and 55 million shares for $28 to $30 a share, putting the company's valuation at around $15 to $16 billion U.S. The NASDAQ has suffered several technical issues over the past few months and paid $10 million to the SEC over the problems with the Facebook IPO. Samsung unveiled a new component for smartphone cameras called ISOCELL. ISOCELL should make low-light pictures better since it increases light sensitivity, as well as allow for more accurate color reproduction. Samsung says the move to ISOCELL will allow it to create devices that can capture high-resolution images and still be small enough to fit into a mobile device without affecting the design.